we get started. This video involves the reloading of mixed head stamp brass that some reloading viewers with OCD or other anal retentive conditions may find to be upsetting and or distressing. This will involve the use of second-hand reloading equipment, some of which was bought off of eBay that is not expensive enough to brag about over Facebook. Additionally, the reloading of hunting ammunition for 223 will involve the use of commercial 223 brass and 5.56 military surplus ammunition that will deliver a high degree of accuracy. To avoid distress, if you are unable to watch this made simple video that will use incorrect terminology such as the thingy or the doofer, please switch off now. Get yourself a nice cup of emotionally reassuring beverage or alternative comfort option that suits your particular safe space needs to remain calm. Moving on. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing great. So this is going to be a video about reloading for rifle calibers, specifically 223, although these techniques and methods I'm going to show you apply to other calibers like 308, even up to 50 caliber BMG. Now we're not going to be reloading using highly expensive equipment. We're going to start reloading using the simplest equipment that you can buy off places like eBay or even web forums or places where people sell hunting gear that's been used. So what do you need? How are we going to get started? What we're going to be doing. Well let's have a look at the simple stuff first. So everyone, you can see here I've got a bit of a messy reloading table with lots of bits and pieces on it. But to get started, the first thing we need to be thinking about is a simple press. Now this press here, a Lee press, is quite inexpensive and you do get them turning up all over the place that have been used and they can start off at £10 going up to much more expensive models and, and options but we're going to need to think about powder options and of course we've got a powder thrower here again a lead powder thrower not expensive they're quite handy things to use you can set the powder measure to where you want it to be it throws out a charge and then you can confirm the weight of the charge using balance scales standard balance reloading scales or in fact digital scales like the ones we've got here they get bought on eBay for less than £10 they're highly accurate they do weigh in grains so they're very good to have Apart from that, we've got our press, we've got our throw, we've got scales, we're able to do all of that. We're going to need some simple tools to work the brass itself. Now, we might get ourselves some mixed brass and we'll look at this shortly. It could be all different types of calibers, it could be ex-military surplus, and that will need a bit of checking and a little bit of working over. But you're going to need a set of reloading dies. <clears throat> now, I've bought a set of dies off eBay and uh, they were only just over £10, and that's not expensive stuff. Now, when I was looking at the pictures of these, they weren't looking too great, but fingers crossed, oh, if we can get into them, they might be okay. So, it's 223 Remington dies. When I saw them, they looked like RCBS dies, which are good quality. Yep, here we go. And on first inspection, we've got both dies here. This one's got an obvious bit of damage to it. We'll have to address that shortly. But uh, they're a little bit rusty, they're certainly a little bit worse for wear. This die here, the decapping pin on it's been broken off. Now that's not a disaster. The end of this, the expander and the decapping pin can be removed and you can put new ones back in, so that's not a problem. But these dies just need a general clean up and then they'll be fit for purpose. So, we've got our dies. Yes, they'll need a little bit of work, but what else do we need to think about? Okay folks, so here's the thing. When you start getting some equipment together and you've got brass, you're going to want to play with it, start sorting it out, maybe size it, all the rest of that. But before you think about diving into this, do get yourself a quality reloading manual. Now I'd definitely recommend Modern Reloading the Second Edition by Richard Lee. It's a fantastic manual that isn't tied down to one particular bullet make or any particular powder group. It's fully objective and it covers a wide range of bullets and powders for your calibers you might want to reload. So having a quick look at the book, you'll notice that they are quite substantial. These reloading manuals are big books and there's lots and lots of information per calibre from everything you need from pressures to the propellant types, the bullet weights and all the rest of it. This book is guaranteed to help you reload safely and within acceptable margins. I really, really recommend you don't start going on Facebook and asking for advice off places like hunting forums. You're going to get 100 different answers and none of those answers are necessarily going to be safe or appropriate for your calibre. Just because someone was able to throw together a load and use it without blowing themselves up doesn't mean you can repeat that. So, reloading manual. Read it, 
use the information and stick within the guidance that it gives you. That's vital. Okay folks, so here's our dies nicely cleaned up. They're not too bad, they're not perfect, they're not factory new, but they're good enough to do the job that we're going to need them to do. Now, your two dies, you've got a full length sizing die and you've got a seating die. The full length sizing die is really important. We need to use it properly and make sure that brass is full length sized. If you take brass that's been once fired and it hasn't been properly sized, it might not fit properly into a gun and allow for safe shooting. So how does this die actually work? Well, the centre component, as we saw before, it had a broken decapping pin. That's now been replaced. The idea behind this die is, this little part here is an expander. So the decapping pin, it knocks out the spent primer of brass and then uh, allows you to reprime the brass once that pocket's been cleaned. The expander, as the case has been full length sized internally, as this goes out of the case, it expands the actual neck of the case to the correct diameter for seating of a bullet. So, a very important die, very important process. We've got to always get that one right. But once the brass has been properly sized, we can then clean it, prime it, and then it's ready for charging before seating a bullet. The seating die is a much simpler die, and it has a centre component with a little cone. And this little cone is all about holding the tip of the bullet centre in the die, so that when pressure is put onto the the case and the bullet to press together using the, the press itself, you're going to get a nicely seated bullet to the correct depth that's consistent and always the same depth of seating. So two very important dies that allow you to get the process of reloading done safely and consistently. But let's move on to start working with our brass. When you get brass, brass can come in a lot of different forms and you don't know the condition of the brass in either of those two yellow tubs. But if you get brass through the post that you've bought or from friends, even people on forums, you don't necessarily know how many times that brass has been fired. You can't look at this case and say this has been fired two, three, four times, or it may just be a first firing. Sometimes the cases can be military cases. Now we mentioned you might get military brass. And here's a good example. This is stuff that's been fired through an SA-80, or it could be surplus ammo, and you've managed to get hold of some of it. Now that primer pocket has been crimped. It's basically stamped under pressure to make it harder for the, the primer to come out. Now, realistically, if you decide you're going to knock out these primers, you definitely don't want to be using a standard decapping pin. Chances are you'll bend it or break it straight away. So if you do get surplus brass like this and you wish to use it for 223, it might be stamped 556 by 45 that's not strictly speaking 223 caliber, although it is completely compatible. You just need to be mindful that these military specification calibers, 556 by 45 they have thicker brass walls. And because of that, the case volume internally is a little bit less. And that affects the amount of pressure that you generate as the propellant burns within your case and then drives the projectile at your barrel. So please bear that in mind. If you are going to be shooting 223 and you get hold of a lot of surplus, please bear in mind it will change the pressures you generate. Okay, so let's just see how we're going to knock these spent primers out without putting pressure on decapping pins in our full length sizing die. Now I'd recommend you get yourself a tool, a little bit like this, I've made this one, or you could buy a universal decapping tool, that's great. But if you're making your own tool like this that I've made from just a roofing screw, make sure that it's nice and smooth around the ends. You don't want to damage the flash hole if you're punching out primers. Now, you're going to need a different amount of force for punching out something that's been reloaded a couple of times like this and something that's a commercial case that has a crimp in it. So we'll just have a little look at the process. Now we need to make sure we locate our tool into the flash hole and then using a shell holder like this, which is very important, you're not going to be able to work any brass in your press unless you've got a shell holder. This is a size number four specifically for 223 Remington. Get it located and then pop it down onto your desk. Now I would recommend using some sort of protection for your desk, like a piece of wood or a piece of metal, so that you're not putting big dents into your table. So, you're not going to be able to knock out the primer unless you have a little hammer. And it doesn't take a little lot of force just to knock that out. And you can see there, we've knocked out the primer quite easily, just with a couple of little taps, and then discard of that primer into somewhere where it's not going to get into either equipment or upper hoover or something like that. So, we've decapped our case, happy days. We've got to clean out this, this uh, primer pocket, that's not a big deal, we'll do that shortly. But let's have a look at the difference between knocking a primer out of that case and something that's military surplus like this bad boy. Now, I'm not going to expect this to come out easy. It's going to need a, quite a bit of a bash, 
But once it's out, we can then look at uh, improving the, the primer pocket so that it makes it easier to then put another primer in and knock it out in the future. So, and there we go, we've got it out. Much more bashing, a lot more force, but here we go, the primer's out, the case is done, and we're ready to improve the pocket of this case. Now, it's important to know that the crimp can be a ring or it can be little square stamps, but that primer pocket would be very difficult to put a new primer back into without reaming the pocket out a little bit. Now, a good tool to use is either a chamfer tool like this, or I prefer a countersink. But we're just going to use the chamfer tool just to show you the basic process. So we get it in there and we give it a good reaming, and what that very quickly does is take off the lip of that crimp and you get a nice little beveled finish to the case. And now this case is ready to go for reloading in the normal way as we would do with any other case. The primer will locate nicely into that pocket and seat nice and tight. Right, let's get on with some sizing of brass. Now I've set my press up here quite simply. We've got the right shell holder in the press, it's a size number 4. These just click into the, the press, no problem, at the top of the ram. And of course the full length sizing die has been set up so that when the, the arm of the press is put down, it's just going to kiss up under the bottom of the full length sizing die. Now you might think, okay, we've got our cases, let's run them through the press. But that's not quite as easy as it goes. We need to make sure we lube these cases. We put a little bit of lubricant on the outside of the case so that it runs up through the die and comes out nice and easy. If you use too much lubricant though, you get hydraulic compression and it will damage the case. Okay, so you tend to get a little bit of denting in the shoulder or the neck, which isn't what you want. Now I use petroleum jelly to to lube my cases. None of these fancy case lubes that you can buy online or wherever else. You just don't need it. Petroleum jelly is fantastic. It's easy to use, it's easy to wipe off the cases. So all you need is just a little bit on your fingers, rub it into your fingers and it'll last for a few cases. So just a little bit on the outside of the body of the case. Don't lube the neck, you just don't need to. Okay, if you put too much on, like I say, it's going to move up into the case and it's going to deform that case, it's going to cause dents. And then just pop it into your your shell holder, run it up, make sure the, the decapping pin is on the inside of the case and then just run it through and it'll go all the way up into the bottom and you can see here it's a nice kiss and then just pull her out. Now you might get quite a bit of resistance on your first couple of cases on new dies don't worry about that and there we've got a full length size case. Chuck it in your new tub and then repeat. Again, there's still a little bit of lube left on my fingers rub it on the outside of the body of the case, pop it in your shell holder and repeat nice and easy. Now there's no rush to do this, you don't have to be superman at it, just take your time, get it right, check every case when you've done it, pop them in and repeat. Okay, so things are going well. We've got all our brass full length resized, but we need to think about something else. These cases might have been fired a different number of times, several times or once fired, I don't know. But the neck on cases that have been fired several times can stretch out and be inconsistent across a batch. Now there are tools to bring back consistency to the whole batch and we need to trim these cases back. Now the standard tools you're going to need to trim cases are going to be obviously a shell holder specific to calibre with a case length gauge. You're going to need a cutter and of course a stud that holds your shell holder. Now to show you that process it's pretty straightforward. I've got a 308 case here just because it's a bit bigger. Now when you've got your stud and your case holder together, it simply holds the case as you see here. Now for me, I like to pop it in a cordless drill because it's a lot easier than turning these by hand. Now where you've got your cutter and your case length, case length gauge together, you just pop it in, locate your primer pocket and then spin it with a drill. Now you'll quickly see brass spinning off the case and all of a sudden it'll be cut and there'll be no more brass coming off. You just stop, take out your gauge and then have a quick inspection of the case. Now what will happen is, you're going to get a little bit of burr around the tip of the neck on there, inside and outside. And all we need to do to remove that is use one of these chamfer tools, give it a little spin inside, give it a little spin outside, and you'll remove that burr. Give it a little feel, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then that case is done. Now this is going to take a little bit of time across a batch, but it's well worth doing to make sure you've got consistency across all of your brass. Okay, so cleaning brass. It's a bit of a controversial one this, but it's whatever works for you. Some people like to use case tumblers, ultrasonic cleaners, even wire wool. Some people don't even clean their cases and that's fine if that works for them. 
But what I like to use is any form of metal polishing wadding. Now when I say wadding, it's basically a little tin of fibrous material that's got a polishing agent on it that's really good for especially working with brass and copper materials like that. Now you don't need to use a lot in one go, but what I find is it gives you a really nice finish to the, this particular the end of the case, which gives you confidence in the seating of the bullet and the rest of it. Now you could do this by hand, but what I like to do is use the same process I'd use for trimming down the cases. Pop it in your stud in your case holder, in your cordless drill, give the brass a little bit of a spin, and very quickly you'll see it darkens up as it cleans off all that excess dirt, gunk and material. Any bit of rag, any bit of old sock, anything like that, and then you just polish it back down. And very quickly you'll notice you've got a very well polished case there. Nice and shiny, really, really clean. But try not to get any of the stuff inside the case, you're only doing the outside of that case. So going through that batch, it might take you a little bit of time, but you are going to get really shiny, really nice quality brass to work with. So the cases are nice and clean. Brilliant. But we do need to clean out the primer pocket. Now the best way to clean out a primer pocket is not with any expensive tools. Get any little screwdriver bit or any little screwdriver that fits in the back of the pocket and just give it a little spin out like this. The little bits of carbon that get in there from when the primer flashes, they're easily flicked out. It's a very simple step, just needs done. Okay, don't forget to do it. Now, here's a mixed batch for you. We've got some Hornady, we've got Federal, Remingtons, and we've got a couple of surplus options there. Now, all of the pockets have had a little reaming out just to make sure that the primers locate well. Now, particularly with military surplus, the crimp on those primer pockets, you do need to get rid of it. There's a risk of popping a primer if we try and force one into a, a pocket that's not reamed. So they're all nice and clean, so we're ready to prime this brass. Now it is all different brass, and I'm not bothered about that. I'm not looking for exceptional range performance, I'm just looking to put rounds down range that I'm happy that I could hunt with. Okay, so to get started priming, ideally you're going to need a hand priming tool like this, and then you're going to need some primers certainly, but you need to get the right shell holder for the auto prime that you use. Whatever hand priming tool you use, you're going to need that right shell holder. And there's different types of shell holders. So obviously you've got your shell holder that goes into your press, that one on the left. And then you've got the shell holder that goes into the stud that we looked at when we were trimming and cleaning our brass. But you need a specific shell holder for these auto priming tools. Uh, these other ones just ain't going to cut it. Now, priming's dead simple. So we'll have a nice good close look at that just now. Okay, so working with a hand priming tool, it's really easy. Now, you've got the bed where you put all your primers underneath this uh, glass top, but you've also got a shell holder that's specific to your calibre. So we've mentioned before that the shell holder for 223 is size number 4. Now, it's a really straightforward process. Once the primer's in the tray, you pop your case in there, and then you're going to push a primer up. So pushing the primer up, there's just a little lever underneath, and you push it, and it forces the primer up. So you need a little bit of force, they don't just slip in but let's get this tray with some primers in it. Now I'm only doing a few just now, so I'm just going to pop in the number of primers that I need. Now when you've got your primers, do buy new primers, any sort of second hand primers that might have been sitting on someone's shelf, they could have been there for years, so you're not guaranteed consistent performance, but just open up your little primer tray in your pack, and if you want 10, you want 20, just open up to what you want. Put it upside down into the the actual table of the, the auto prime and then turn it back and what you'll find is all your primers drop out. Now you'll notice that they're not all the right way up and you want the silver side down. So the best way to do this is just tap your tray, give it a little shake and what you'll find is very quickly they'll start to roll over. And the ones that don't quite roll over, just flick them over like this. The tray generally has a little bobbled finish that catches the primers and turns them over. Now you need your top on your, your primer table there. If you've not got it, they're all going to fall out. And then, once you've done that, give it a little shake and run it into the little loading ramp there. So once it's in, make sure you've collected a primer. So work it up once, and then pop your case into the shell holder, give it a little shake, and then it should locate a primer, and then push one in. It doesn't take too much pressure, but what you find is you've got a lovely primed case. Now do make sure it's primed properly by rubbing your finger on the end, and it'll feel nice and smooth. And of course, if that's all good, then just repeat the process. So, it doesn't matter what head stamp the brass is, you just pop them in, 
repeat the process. And with a nice beveled edge on all your cases, this is a nice military one, the primer does locate nicely and seats tightly. But do check every one just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. OK, and then go through your batch and once you're finished, it's time to move on. OK, so here's our reloading manual data for 223 Remington with a 55 grain jacketed bullet. So any jacketed soft point basically. All our powders are down the left hand side and here's the information on our minimum charge that we put in in grains and our maximum charge we would put in. Now I'm going to use a powder Vitivuri N130. I've got it at the right price, I want to give it a go. It's not something I've used before. But the minimum charge for starting off is set to 18.7 grains and that should give me a velocity of about 2812 feet per second at muzzle. Now the maximum load there at 21.9 grains says that it should be running at about 3146 feet per second. I certainly don't need my bullets to go that fast so I'm going to drop the grainage back and I think a good sort of weight that will get a good consistent bullet will probably be about 20 grains. Now for load development and testing you should always start at the minimum and work up till you get a nice consistent load that shoots well on paper. But for me I'm just going to jump in somewhere in the middle because I trust my data, I trust my rifle and I trust my reloading skills. So I'm going to go for 20 20 grains of Vitivuri N130 and we'll go and create a load and shoot it on paper. So write it down what you're going to create. So 223, 55 grains and it's going to be 20 grains charge in Vit N130 and do not lose the data. Keep it in your book, use it as a page marker and then you can always go back to it. So let's go and create a load, see how we get on. OK, so we're ready to pop some bullets into some brass. But before we get started, we need to create a little template bullet so that we can set up our dies and make sure that everything's going to produce a nice consistent load. Now, a really good way of doing this is, once you've screwed your dies in loosely, if you've not set them up, is just to pop your case in, pop a bullet that you're going to be loading with on top and run it up into the die. Now, you can see here it's making contact. So that's good, we've got a starting point. But I'm going to lock this down. And then the die's still running, but we're going to seat it just to get it started and see how deep it is. Now I don't think on first look that's going to be deep enough for, for loading. It's in a little bit, but it's not deep enough. So we might want to move this bullet back a little bit so that the base of the bullet's actually just below the start of the shoulder. So very easily, you just pop it back up so it's all the way down, the arm's down, and then screw it down and you'll see the arm come up just a little bit and then press it in, see how it looks. Maybe just a little bit more. And let's have a look at that. I don't think that looks too bad. Now I've used a bit of a damaged bullet to do this, uh, not one that would fire normally. But we've got the base of the bullet just below the shoulder. I think that looks quite good, so I'm going to keep this as my template. But I need to sort this die out and lock it down so it's not going to move. Now on the side of the actual uh, outer nut ring that goes round, you've got a little grub screw that you can tighten down with an Allen key. At the moment I'm not going to worry about doing that, I'm just going to tighten the, the ring down. And there we go, nice and tight, everything's locked, so we'd be able to start sticking our bullets on our cases and get them to size. But we've no powder set up yet, we've not got our powder measure set up. But I've popped some of the Vitivuri N130 in the hopper and I'm going to quickly get it to the charge weight that we want. So we're looking for 20 grains. Now I know that in the actual measuring barrel here that's going to be a bit more than 20 grains. So I'm going to have to screw it in quite a little bit. Now getting these set up, I wouldn't recommend you just throw charge after charge and don't have some sort of methodical approach. Screw it down and then see how much powder you've got. Now if you have an old case in a bigger calibre like a 308 or anything like that, as long as there's a primer in it so the powder doesn't fall out, you can collect the charge and weigh it. Now the easy way of doing that is to quite simply use your powder scales. Now you can use your balance scales, that's no problem, it takes a little bit of time to set that up. But if you pop your case on digital scales and then zero it by using the tear button, as so long as it says zero, when you throw a charge in there, you can very quickly see how much charge you're going to throw. So if I have a quick measure of this, it comes out at 16 grains, so we want a little bit more, so we open this up a little. Pop 
pop your charge back in, do it again. Nineteen point four, pop it in again. And that says 20.4 so we might want to screw it in just a little touch and then we'll use the actual balance scales just to see how it's going now quite importantly you do want to confirm that the weight on the scales you've got your digital scales is quite accurate if it's not then you'll be getting a false reading and potentially loading dangerous ammunition now that's coming out almost spot on 20 grains now so I'm going to use my balance scales and see exactly where the charge is so we'll move these out of the way and quickly set these up now with using your balance scales it is important to make sure that the scales are zeroed before we use them so very quick way of doing that you set the ball in the balance scale to zero get your powder holder on the back of it set it all to zero making sure it is exactly on zero and then the scale should pretty much tip up and be aligned now this is just out just a fraction out and there's adjustment on these uh, scales to then sort it out so we'll have a little look see okay, just a little bit more that's pretty good so we'll weigh this charge now and I've kept it in the case, just pour it into the little holder and move this up and hopefully it'll be about 20 grains and as if by magic it's only a tiny fraction over and we're talking probably about less than tenth of a grain and I'd be happy with that so we're pretty much bob on 20 grains so I'll pop that charge back in the hopper and we'll go back to our digital scales from here. Now, easiest way to confirm your charge is close or exact is that for each case you're going to fill, you pop it on your scales and you weigh that case. And when you pop your charge in, you re-weigh it. And having zeroed it, having teared it, the charge in the case is going to weigh exactly what you've got in the case. And that says 20 grains exactly so I'm happy with that charge we've got a case ready to see a bullet so let's see if we can see one nice and clean and there we go there's our first bullet has got powder in it you can hear it when you shake it I reckon that looks like a nice bullet so I'm just going to pop that one on the side there and repeat that process. Case on the scales, tear, and then put your charge in. Twenty grains, and seat the bullet. Put them beside each other make sure they look good and repeat and once we've got a little batch done we can go and test fire these on paper and see how good they perform now they're all different head stamps and a lot of purists would say that's a sin you cannot load with different head stamps but I disagree the case only holds a charge it holds the bullet it's for sending it down your barrel the brass doesn't matter half as much as the consistency of your charge and your seating depth that you achieve so let's go make a few more of these and then go and shoot them on paper and see how they do. Right folks, so crunch time. Here's some of the ammunition we've reloaded in mixed head stamps in 55 grain for 223. We're using Vitavuri N130, it's a powder I've never used before. Let's shoot them on paper and see how they get on.
Okay, so we can see we put three pretty much in the black, one slightly pulled, but we'll give the rifle a quick correction and see if we can put three in the white. It's looking okay so far. Right then, so, three in the white, happy with that all day. So when people talk about, you know, shooting consistency, the consistency is not all about the brass. It's about seating depth, it's about the powder used, making sure you use the same primers. The case is only there to hold all that together. So, 5.56 by 45 military surplus. It's a fantastic case to use for 223. Just keep the pressure sensible, don't load to the max, and everything will be sweet. Do use your reloading manual and stay within the guidance that it gives you. Don't get creative and try and create hot stuff. That's never a good idea. I hope you've enjoyed this video, folks. And if you want to see more, do like, share and subscribe. I hope to see you again. Thanks.